we're back just like that. We're now moving into our second segment for uh, this morning. And this one is a conversation that surrounds employees' income tax return process. Now, uh, we've got a rep from the Belize Tax Service. Actually, Michelle Brown is in with us uh, from the Belize Tax Service. Michelle, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Palacio. How are you? I am doing great. And it's always nice to see you. It's always nice to have you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And it's not always our happiest topic, though. Yeah. <laughs> I know. But it is that time of year, and this is what we do as responsible citizens in being able to file our tax returns. And uh, the deadline is very quickly approaching, right? Correct. Yeah. All right. The, so the deadline for filing the employee tax return is the end of March, which is, will be the 31st of March. Mm hmm so we implore on all employees the, when they receive their TD, TD4 mm -hmm. to fill out the form, the, which would be the BTS203, okay. the employee return form. Fill it out and attach their TD4 that their employer provided mm -hmm. along if they're receiving a response, along with a copy of their social security card, mm -hmm. their banking information, um, an active bank, let's be specific when we speak to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, an active bank account and ensure that every detail of the form is correct. Okay. So you, 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 you stressed on an active bank, simply saying that some people are actually just putting a bank account on there? Correct. And uh -huh. um, what we have found is that employees submit their returns with a banking information that is not active. For instance, they won't use their um, bank account that their salary is being deposited into, mm -hmm. but another one that they probably know that they have, for example, Atlantic Bank. Yeah. However, they haven't used that bank account for quite a while. And so with that being the problem, by the time we go to process a refund, the bank account won't be active and that refund will be rejected. Mm. So we implore on them to give us an active recent bank account, mm -hmm. which will ensure that the process run a little more smoothly. Michelle, let's, let's go back a little. The importance of paying your taxes. Why, why, why would we say that that is important? And a lot of people don't like to have the conversation, but it is important to know. Correct. It is important to pay our taxes because at the end of the day, the taxes run our country. Mm -hmm. we, we collect taxes to do the infrastructure for our country. Mm -hmm. it, it, it also ensures that the health system is up and running. We, we, all our tax contribute to our economy in itself. Mm -hmm. So we employ on all taxpayers, whether it's employees, whether it's business owners, that we have to pay our fair share in order to ensure that our economy is run correctly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's 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 talk about some of the common errors that people make when they're doing their their uh, returns. Yeah, the TD4. Um, so it is it it can be confusing for some people. I think some people love doing this kind of forms, but uh, tell us about some of the things we can help people to get through. Okay, the common well, we won't say the common error. Let's say that the Employee return starts from the employer filing their TD4 summary correctly. Mm -hmm. A lot of our issues in giving back refunds is that some employers are not reconciled. Mm -hmm. And let me expand a little more on what reconciliation means to the tax department. Because what happened, employees believe that the minute the employer submits their summary, that everything is okay. However, when that summary is submitted, and which I may state that the deadline for that is the 1st of March, mm -hmm. where employers should submit their TD4 summary along with all the TD4 for their employees, they need to ensure that everything that is on the summary, the emoluments, the taxes withheld, it come back or comply with what was paid for the year. Yeah. It, it's a basic check and balance. Okay. However, when we put this information into our system, if our system does not match its back with what the employer submitted, that is where the reconciliation process has a, a, a bottleneck. Mm -hmm. So we try to contact back these employers. Mm -hmm. And we know with the pandemic, we have been facing more issues because businesses have been closed. They're not able to get their documents that because they're working from home. So that has posed a little 
problem with us completing some of the reconciliation. So actually the whole process starts at that point mm -hmm. whereby these need to be reconciled. Yeah. Once that's reconciled and everything is order, in, in order, we input that into our system. Mm -hmm. Once that is correct and fitted, then the employee file their return at the end of March, okay. which in we also employ that all employees file regardless of the reconciliation process because we have some employees that has debit, they owe. Mm -hmm. And once they pass that deadline, mm -hmm. they have penalty and interest that is added. Wow. Right? Um, so, so we try to employ on them to file early. Even if it balances out, you should still submit? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. the, the minute the employer submit that TD4 summary to us, mm -hmm. They can, once they receive it from their employer, they come in and they submit their employee income tax return. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So that, that, uh, that uh, provides some clarity. You were Let's, gonna I was going to ask, so I know one of the areas that you get a lot of questions is looking at the issue of deductibles. Um, so there are things that you can file for in your return um, if you have perhaps helped a family member through school, uh, if you've given charitable donations to other per to other organizations, talk to us about how people can be able to um, understand what they can include and how to include it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, we do have the charitable. We have the charitable donations, whether it's to a sport organization that is a charitable organization. You also have to your tithes to the church. These can be added, and actually, we have that at line third, the one on the form. Mm -hmm. If you are claiming $2,000 for charitable, say, tithes for that particular year, mm -hmm. what we do, there is a formula that is used. It's either one-sixth of your taxable income or whichever is greater. Sometimes the one-sixth is far greater, so we will just accept yeah. the charitable donation that is presented on your receipt. Because yeah. let's be clear that when claiming these um, deductibles you have to present proper documentation yeah. which is a receipt from that charitable institution or a letter on their official letterhead stating that you have donated x amount of dollars for that particular year yeah yeah when it so, comes to the educational contributions so if it's, let me just let me just ask what so if sure. it's for church for example, because I know people have asked, well, you know, you give to church. Mm -hmm. If yes, you put tithes. it in the collection bowl, there's no accountability. So you <laughs> you have to get something from your church to say you have been donating. Um, yes, And do. that would be submitted. Correct, you do. You have to, re um, usually they issue you with a letter mm -hmm. indicating the amount that you have contributed for that particular year. And then yeah. you submit that. And what's the cap for that? You said one six. One six of your taxable income, which will be line twenty. Okay. okay. All right. And so, then sports and education. Let's talk about that one. Sports is done similar to the tides. Mm -hmm. So it's the same process whereby you have to provide your um, receipts or your letter from that institution, mm -hmm. and it's the one six similar to the mm -hmm. tides. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So if I buy jerseys for a team, does that count as a contribution to sports? Correct, and they yeah. can give you a letter indicating that you have contributed X yeah. amount of dollars for that country, um, for that institution. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and likewise, as, as you have there for education, is four hundred per child, and not more than four child for that particular year. Okay. So it's a maximum of sixteen hundred dollars. But that's also that they cannot be. They can, it can be your child, and it can Correct. be a child that lives with you. Correct. Yeah. It can't be your child and can't be a, a child that lives with you. Mm -hmm. So it could be a family member, but not living with you. Mm -hmm. So they, they have several scenarios where that can account for when it comes to contributing for a child. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, you know what? There, there are many times, especially around this time, while you file your TD4, you get back a, a response saying that you owe. And people, uh, you know, you, you become flabbergasted at, at, the, at the thought that, man, how do I owe? How, how is this put into context so folks could understand as to why they owe or why they do not? Okay, yes, that is a, a question that is asked several times, like, 
how could we owe then the um, employer. firm, yeah. employer, the dog, the correct amount? Yes, we do have instances where you owe. As I can speak, even I end up owing. But this is because we have different personal relief. Yeah. And that is where the, the, the deb debits or the debts come into play. Because the minute, for example, if I earn $1,000 every month between January to June, mm -hmm. that is taxable at, say, the personal relief of $25,600, right? Or $24,600. Then in July, I get an increment. Mm -hmm. My salary increase. Mm. That then put me in the other bracket, which is the 22.6. So from January to June, I have been paying at the 24.6 relief. However, come July, I get an increment, which put me in the other bracket. So for that whole January to June, that is where your salary was under tax, and that is the portion where you end up owing on. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, when you have fluctuations in your income. Correct. Yeah. Oh. Correct. So I always tell people, the minute you reach a final threshold of 19.6, there should be no reason why you should have a, a, a balance owing mm -hmm. once the correct rate is being deducted from your salary. However, you also have persons who receive bonuses, they receive increments that were not deducted, mm -hmm. yeah. the taxes were not deducted, that end up having them owing at the end of the year also. Yeah. So when we review their salary register, when we go through the, the information that they provide, then we can show them the reason why they end up owing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, this is, this is always one of the, the challenges in the process. And I want to ask how you've, you've changed it with uh, COVID times. Um, in collecting back the forms and also working along with people. I remember you used to set up a table and help people if they had any problems as they came in. Okay, well, currently what we, we are doing, we receive a lot of these forms via email. Oh. So, mm -hmm. yes, we, we encourage persons, they don't have to come in, we're accepting it via email. Okay. Once the sign is properly filled out, signed, all the documentation is sent in, we do accept those. And, and just to add that, coming, just, uh, just a little information is that coming July of this year, mm -hmm. we are embarking on a new system. So that system will be more e-service friendly. Yeah. So they can do everything online. You can view your account online. It will be much easier for all taxpayers across the board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, you know, I, I'm glad you're, you're providing some clarity into... Um, to what it's like now the open date and close date in terms of filing your uh, your td force i'll try as i explained the the employer deadline is first of march which is next week yeah monday okay so some employees are already submitting in their forms because they already received their td4 so on from now until the 31st of march employees have to submit their returns. Okay. The close date for that come 1st April, if they have any balance outstanding, mm -hmm. then the penalty entry starts. Yeah. However, if you have a refund, they can file whenever they um, see it fit. Yeah. Mm. Well, we got to touch on that refund because you know what people are going to say, <laughs> that they have to pay a penalty <laughs> if they go past April 1st, but it takes quite a bit of time <laughs> for that return to come the other way. Yes, I agree. And like I was explaining earlier, the, once these TD summary is submitted accurately, it's most, much easier for us to reconcile. As I said, when they um, submit it, it's a little process that we have to do in-house to get it balanced, entered into the system. And the minute that is entered into the system, we start processing these returns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for those folks who probably wouldn't have received their return of late is because the employer has not completely reconciled. Probably we're having issues. We are in communication with these employers to try and get the, the information that is required to complete the reconciliation as quick as possible. Yeah. However, as I explained with the pandemic, it's posing a little issue that we are not receiving the information as quickly as we would have wanted. Okay, which, um, which uh, leads me to the question that's, uh, <clears throat> that's circling in my mind and i think a lot of people would say the same thing pandemic uh, there were cuts to salary how 
how is that going to uh, how is that going to correspond? What's going to happen there? Okay, well, if there's cuts in salary, then the taxes should, should reflect, reflect evenly. Because if they're cut, then your salary goes down, so your taxes go down. Mm -hmm. So that shouldn't pose an issue likewise. Mm -hmm. Because whatever's on your TD4 actually reflects what you actually receive for that year. Okay. It, it does not include, oh, I was receiving 1500 so they will yeah. keep that on the form. If I was receiving 15 and now I'm receiving 1,000, then your TD4 should reflect that 1,000 and not the 1,500. All right. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right. And so uh, what else can you encourage people? You said that it's you can also submit your form online. So what? You take a scanned copy and you send it in. And to what email address? At info at bts.gov.bz okay right. and for us to uh, check any other information if you'd like to see how the process is done where do we go you can go to our website at bts.gov.bz okay bts.com that gov that's the email uh -huh. bts.gov.bz www.bts.gov.bz all right all right. And, and, and just to add a, a little more, as I, I would want to, like I started and said, where the process begins is with the employer. Yeah. I want to ask the employer, it's not hard for them to reconcile before they bring in the TD4 mm -hmm. summary, because what I want to employ on them, whatever is um, they have paid for that year, for the months, should reflect back to the taxes that are put on these CD4. So yeah. once, once that is reflected as the same, there's no reason for us to have any problem when the reconciliation process starts. And in, in, in the submission of your banking information, that makes the refund easier to, to um, deposit back to the employees, right? Correct, because we do direct deposit. Yeah. When we do do the refunds, it's, in collaboration with the treasury because we don't issue them directly yeah. from here. We prepare the invoices and then that is sent to our smart stream system mm -hmm. whereby it is then approved and paid out by the treasury. So the banking information is very important to ensure that they give us accurate information so that we don't have that delay that the payment is being rejected at the end. And then if you have to pay, if you have um, um, some money owed to the uh, tax department, how do we get that there? Does it have to be you, in person still? No, we do have payment um, through the Atlantic Bank okay. or through the Belize Bank. Okay. So you can, if you have an Atlantic Bank account, you can inform us and we, we communicate with Atlantic Bank so that they can enter you into the system so that you can make that payment online. Okay. And also we have the Belize Bank and we have bank to bank because we do have an account. I don't remember the account <laughs> right now, but we do have an account whereby yeah. you do do direct deposit to okay. our account and then we upload it or we have the cashier do the, pay the uploading and payment here and then we send out the receipts. All right. Well, uh, you provide us with the clarity we needed, and so uh, if there is anything else you'd like to share with us, that uh, now is a good time to. Okay, like I said earlier, you look forward to our new system coming soon, which will make things very much efficient and easier for taxpayers, mm -hmm. um, whereby they can do everything online, and as I said, they can check their account, they can... Do, they can make payments online. They can send inquiries online. If they have new registration, they don't have to come in. Everything can be done online. So I want to ask all taxpayers out there, including um, the employers or business owners, to cooperate with us. We will have staff calling them because we have to update our um, data at this moment okay. so that we can have an easy transition. So we will be calling taxpayers, asking them for minor information that probably we need for the new system. Mm -hmm. So to ask them to cooperate with us, give, give us um, information so that at the end of the day, all of us, including them, will benefit from our new system. All, all right. right. Well, uh, we're so thankful to have had you in, have you in uh, Thank Michelle. Thank you, too. Thank you so very much. Thanks for the information. Now we yeah. know what to do, how to do, and when to do. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. We're about to take a break, though. When we come back, we'll be uh, chit-chatting with representatives of the Belize, actually the Belmopan and Cancer Society, and they'll be giving us an update on recent events. Stay with us. We'll be right back.